Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna to talk about all things Shantakai. We're gonna learn a little bit about the history of Shantakai. We're going to do a full face of Shantakai makeup. So if you're interested in learning all things Shantakai, then just keep watching. So thanks for clicking on my video. You, by this point, would have already seen my Live with Shantakai, which I was so proud to do. Uh, we talked a lot about the brand, the philanthropic causes, and learned about some of the hottest new products that they have. Today, I wanted to work on a full face of Shantakai for you, and I'm actually filming this before my live. Um, so that I can show you what my favorite products are, how they apply, and then of course, as I apply my makeup, I'll talk about the sweet, sweet brand that Shantakai is. It, during this video, if you like what you see, give me a like, make sure to subscribe. We're having a lot of fun here. And, and you know, this is just a community where we all have fun. We love each other, we empower each other, we love makeup. So if that's your thing, make sure to subscribe. Go and follow me on my Instagram and Twitter. That's where I make all my makeup friends. We get to talk about all the new releases and just chit chat about makeup all day long. So go and follow me there. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So I'm on this never ending quest, it feels like. like now I understand what YouTubers were talking about when they would say this, but it's like my lighting is never right. It's too bright, it's too dark. Sometimes it's perfect for a couple days and then I switch something up, God knows what, and then it goes all over the place again. So although I do look very bright, I will say that I think it's a little bright, but it is a true representation of what's going on because I'm losing all of my color since um, it's getting colder. It's really cloudy and overcast in Texas a lot of the time. So anyway, that's where we're at today. We're gonna work on a full face of Shantakai makeup. And you know, as I go through that, I'll just talk about the brand a little bit. The first product that we're gonna talk about is the Shantakai Blur Primer. This has SPF 45, and I actually bought a two pack of this from the Nordstrom sale this year. And during the summer, I didn't really use it. It was a little too emollient and too um, glowy, I guess I could say. But as it's gotten colder and uh, my skin is definitely changing very quickly with the cold, cooler weather, I really like how this makes my skin feel. I think it's the perfect prep for makeup and it's got a little bit of SPF. I don't rely on this for my SPF, so I just wanna put that out there. Definitely keeps your skin very hydrated, very pretty, so definitely recommend. The next product that we're gonna go in with is my Shantakai Future Skin. I love, love, love this gel formula in a foundation. Um, I did have my first full face of Shantakai when I was initially trying the brand, and I still stand by what, what I said that day, like it never has my face ever looked that pretty with a foundation on. But as I started to work with the formula a little bit more, what I realized is that the best application method is nature's perfect little blending tools, which are our fingers. I just feel like if you apply too much, it can become a little too emollient, a little too oily, but with your fingers, it just applies like a second skin. And I am just so obsessed with it. This thing retails for $78, but it is worth it, especially if you can get it during the sale. I'm in the shade Nude, and it comes with this little stopper. It does tell you in the packaging to keep this, and I just think that it's good so that it doesn't dry out on you. Um, so I definitely have kept it. Very proud of myself for that. Basically what I do is I just grab a couple little dots over my skin, and I just start to blend, kind of like a moisturizer. So, I wanna to talk to you guys a little bit about Shantakai. First of all, I wanted to say thank you so much to all of you that joined me for the live. Um, I was just so proud that I was able to do that. Um, Shantakai is a brand that I've quickly just become so enamored with. I like what they stand for. I like, you know, what their approach to beauty is. Um, I tell people this all the time, but I've been a hippie for years and years, like at least 10 years where I really got into like botanicals and essential oils and um, really like the medicinal purposes of all that, but it definitely applies to skincare and things you're using for beauty. So that aspect drew me in right away. But I have to tell you that when I look at like some Shantakai little Instagram videos or, or see them on YouTube, like I love Sylvie Shantakai. I don't know, I just feel like she has such a sweet spirit. She's very calm and poised. And I think there's some mannerisms that 
kind of remind me of my mom. So I just love, love, love her. I think she's very smart. I think she's very sweet. And um, I think that the brand embodies that. So as you guys can see, I mean, look at my skin. It looks just like skin. It looked very pretty when I applied it with a brush, but now looking back, I think it was too much. Now with um, my fingers, it looks just like skin. I love it. So let's get into the history of Shantakai. So Sylvie Shantakai is the founder. I've put, uh, I've put a picture here for you. She is just the sweetest lady. She actually started in Paris. She went to school for art and theater in Paris. Going, with, going in with my concealer Le Camouflage Stilo. This is an anti-fatigue corrector pen. And this is in the shade three. This is a number three. So in the late seventies, Sylvie Chantecaille moved from Paris where she was going to school for theater and art to New York. In New York, uh, it was when in 1979, she started her first company alongside or in partnership with her very good friend, Diane von Furstenberg. Now this uh, cosmetics line was very successful and after a while the Lauder family, yes Estee Lauder, asked her to join them. They thought that she was an innovator and that she just saw beauty and the industry so differently than what they had seen and so they asked her to come and start a company with them. They started that company and it was called Prescriptives. So let me tell you a little bit about Sylvie's background. She went to school for theater and art in Paris. In the 70s, she moved to New York City and there she started a company, a beauty company. She started her first cosmetic company with her good friend Diane van Furstenberg. At the time, there was this cult favorite perfume, Tatiana, which is still kind of a big deal. And that was part of her first cosmetics line. In 1979, the Lauder family, yes, Estee Lauder, Estee and her were friends, asked her to come and help them build their own cosmetics company. This cosmetics line was called Prescriptives. So the reason they wanted her to join was because they saw her as very innovative, very forward thinking in the beauty space. And so a big part of this company was they created and developed some very key shade matching technologies for foundations, which is still very, very widely used today. At the time that was super unprecedented. Nobody had ever thought about like custom blend matching to match, to get your perfect foundation match. And so that was something that they did while they were at Prescriptives. Another big, huge winner in that line was that perfume named Calyx, which is still a big deal today. I mean, everybody loves it. I've never had it, but everybody loves that perfume. So how did she fall into beauty? She talks about how she was supposed to be an art dealer, um, which, you know, made a lot of sense. She went to school in Paris for art and theater, but it was her love for cosmetics and the success that they had had with Diane that in the perfume space that really drew her in. And that's kind of how she fell into beauty. And based on her experience with Diane is sort of how Chantecaille got started. Like they started as a very niche French perfume brand and the base of all of her perfumes were botanical scents, fragrances that came from mother earth, from nature and essential oils. So like all of that stuff that's like totally my jam. Within a year and a half though, they did see that they could bring in all of those botanicals and essential oils and all of these essences that they had found in nature and bring them into quality skincare. And that's how they went from perfumes over to the skincare. Now, when she was thinking skincare, she was thinking very high quality skincare, natural products, Chinese medicine, aromatherapy. These were all areas that she felt had a gap in the marketplace. And that was one of the things that interested her the most. And so it really did start from her desire to make high end quality skincare, but at the same time, you know, giving women something healthy that they could apply onto their skin. And that's sort of what drove her. Gonna work on my brows and I'm gonna go in. This is a newer product to me, but it's the Chantecaille Full Brow Perfecting Gel and Tint. This is in the dark brown and it helps your brows grow. I don't think it necessarily fills in the gaps, although we'll see, I'll keep you up to date on that, but it does make your brows grow. 
I think it's like an extension of the Longest Lash Mascara. Now, Chantecaille is a relatively new company. And so, you know, I read an article and they're asking her like, you know, what do you think you came in to do to change in the marketplace? And, you know, her answer was at the time, nobody was doing skincare the way we were, where it was backed by science, but it was mainly stemmed from these botanicals and all of these essential oils. And so again, they felt that that angle was missing and they, it was something that they were very passionate about because they knew that it was effective. They knew that it was backed by science and it was a healthy alternative for a woman's or a man's skin. And so her claim to fame was like, you know, at the time we had the cleanest ingredients in the marketplace at a time where most people weren't even thinking about the ingredients in their skincare. I think nowadays, today in 2020, like it's just kind of a thing, you know, like the whole um, clean beauty, vegan beauty, like it's all definitely um, taken off and having its moment, which I believe is super awesome. Um, you know, you have to, you have to be cognizant knowing that our skin is like our largest organ. It makes a lot of sense to pay attention to what we're applying on our skin. Um, whether that be skincare, makeup, whatever it is. Um, but again, back to the point that Sylvie was just such a forward thinker because at the time nobody was really thinking about that. So I just want to just bring attention to the skin. Do you guys see how just skin like it looks? However, in person, it looks so perfected. It looks, it looks good. It looks alive and healthy. And that was Sylvie's aim as well. So when she started to see that the use of botanicals and essential oils was backed by science and that it proved to be effective, it made the skin look alive. It made it look healthy. That was her whole vision for future skin, which was the foundation that I used earlier. And again, it's just to perfect the skin, to make it look alive and dewy and glowy and beautiful because that's what we get from nature was her thought. I'm going in with my Goa bronzer. This is such a beautiful bronzer, you guys. I have been using it for just a little bit. I wanted to try it, but it's so universal because I've also heard of like my friends that are a lot lighter complected than me being able to use this and even those that are um, deeper than me. So I really do love this bronzer. So let's talk about her family because I feel like you know, we talk about the Chantecaille family. I think that one of the one, one of the family members that we see the most on social media is Olivia Chantecaille, her daughter. And so let's talk about that because it's a newer company, but I do believe that a lot of their success stems from the amazing team they have. Like not only did we get to meet Scott Patrick, who is, you know, a natural uh, direct, a national director of education. So they have really great talent that they attract to the company, but they're also family run and owned. And so I thought that that was really interesting. Um, you know, you may have like a beautiful thing, but to really be a profit to those that you live with in your family and to get them on board and to see the same vision you have is sometimes a very difficult task. And so I learned a little bit about the family and I just thought that that's where the sweetness comes from is how they all work together. So let's learn a little bit about them. The founder is, is Sylvie Shantakai. And so we learned all about her, her philosophy, how she got started. She started with perfumes, went over to skincare and then started developing the makeup line. Um, she had a love for botanicals and flowers and essential oils, all of that. Very innovative, very forward thinking. Then we have the creative director, which is Olivia Shantakai, and she helps with a lot of product development. And um, I think that with product development, not only do you have to be innovative in your thinking, but you also have to kind of see what your competition is. Your competition is not always your enemy. Sometimes it's your friend. You want to give your client base options. You want to be able to create something that's maybe along the lines of a product that somebody's looking for, but make it a little bit better, put your spin on it. It's authentic to who you are, to who Shantakai is, is as a company. And so I really love just learning about Olivia Shantakai. Then we have her other daughter, Alex Shantakai. Alex Shantakai is the VP of sales. She's in sales and marketing, and I think that she does an amazing job. I mean, even from when I learned about the brand earlier this year, I've seen a massive explosion just within YouTube and, uh, um, the 
the beauty creators on YouTube. And, you know, people are really starting to recognize the brand as a true, true competitor in the luxury beauty space. A lot of that is attributed to Alex Shantakai. Next, we have Philippe Shantakai. Philippe Shantakai is the director of media productions. He did not always work for Shantakai. So he went off and did his own thing. He wasn't really interested in like working for the family. Um, and he at one point became very, very interested in photography, production, media. And as the company started to grow, they evolved and they took their love for philanthropy, for the wild and for nature and all of these causes that Sylvie really supported, um, the need became greater for somebody to take these beautiful photos. So a lot of the photos that you see in their ad campaigns on their products, like we see the Walk for Giants and then the Wolves, these were all photos that were taken by Philippe Chantecaille and he directs all media production. And he has such a beautiful eye for photography. Like if you go on their website and you see the photography on there, I mean, even like with their luminous and eye shades and all that, that was all him. And he's really, really good at that. So to have that eye and to be able to capture the things that Sylvie loves in the wild, I think is incredible. And I'm just, I love it. I love that it's a family affair. Next, we have Olivier Chantecaille, which is Sylvie's husband. And he wasn't always a part of the company either. I think that they started the company and then a few years later, he came on and became the CFO. And, you know, they interviewed him and then there's a the little blurb on their website and they're asking him about what he thinks of Sylvie and you know just saying like I just think that she's incredibly smart and intelligent she's very intuitive she knows what she's passionate about and she turns it into something beautiful and so it's been very very wonderful to learn alongside her and to help the company grow and take it to the next level and so you know I think it makes a lot of sense that he says those things because to have Alex and Olivia also as part of the company I mean they're very strong independent women but that have such a sweet spirit and then they have these men that are just also so involved and so supportive and so it makes a lot of sense that they can be that successful because they're all such a beautiful tight unit now later down the road just a few years ago um, olivia's husband actually started working for the company as well and he is the director of operations and what i thought was so interesting is that when these men are interviewed they ask them like what's your favorite shantakai product and so they talk about the um not only the skincare, but then they also talk about, I think Olivier talked about his favorite uh, fragrance, men's fragrance through Chantecaille. And you know, it's just nice that they're all, not only are they involved in the company, but they really truly believe in these products. And so I just thought that it was amazing that each of these men, when they were being interviewed, talked about their favorite Chantecaille products. In general, when you look at the company and you look at all of the individuals that work for this company, you see a lot of men represented within the Chantecaille extended family. And I just love that because just because you're a man doesn't mean that you're not interested in looking your best, making sure that you're doing what's best for your skin so that you can look as youthful as possible for as long as possible. And so, I don't know, I just, I really, I really loved that. So here's some interesting facts about uh, where these products are produced. So their foundations are produced and manufactured in Japan. All of their color cosmetics come from Italy. Their skincare is all manufactured, developed in Switzerland, which I, I don't know, I just feel like Switzerland just sounds like good skin to me, you know? And then all of their fragrance comes from France and made in France. And so I just think that, again, Sylvie staying true to who she is and where she finds these uh, botanicals and essences and all of these things, it's just, it, it stays true to where these products derive from, where you get the purest of ingredients. And we find that quite a bit in these luxury brands. If you remember on our last video when we talked about Guerlain, they still make everything in France because they believe that if they start to out source and make it elsewhere like it will dilute the brand it will dilute the essence of luxury and the quality and so I just thought that was interesting so I, I, I don't know I think that's pretty cool I'm gonna put a little bit of highlight and blush I'm gonna start with their gelée formulas first I absolutely love them I'm gonna go in with my cheek gelée and vibrant it's actually very very pigmented so you have to be careful with how much you go in with I like to just kind of swirl it around and then Slowly go in with my finger and apply a little bit of product. It's really beautiful. I do the same with the highlighter. With this, I mean, I've played with my makeup quite a bit since I purchased it. And so what I find is the best application method is you take the highlighter 
and you just really swirl it around because it really does have a lot of payoff in the product and then you slowly start to dab with your fingers it just gives it a little a really beautiful like lit from within glow now I'm gonna go in with my blush highlight duo this is from the Monterey collection and this was a summer collection we have a really beautiful coral blush and a highlight now this is like their baked formula and it is absolutely beautiful it makes your skin look like glass even the blush for that i like to use one of their brushes they have amazing amazing brushes this is the chantecaille cheek brush but it's like pinched you know it's like pinched there almost flat definitely a very well loved brush and I like to go into the highlight first and just apply this way. Now, as you see, there's a Monterey on this compact. So let's talk about that because that is one of the things that I think initially drew me to the brand is their philanthropic focus. So since 2006, Shantakai has adopted 29 philanthropic causes that they have donated to over the years and it's highlighted in a lot of their collections so for instance this was a summer collection where we had the monterey i think we had the blue whale and there might have been another one um we also see it in like their fall collection where they had the walk for giants the philanthropic cause here was uh the elephants that take this migration walk every single year this is an organization non or nonprofit from kenya and um, it protects that that corridor that elephants take every year and migrate through because more and more a lot of our world is just being developed and so they want to be able to preserve that for the elephant. We see it in this which is actually um, one of my newest collections that I'm so excited about but it's in the wolf collection and it says protect the wolf's eyeshadow trio. They donate to an organization called Conservation Northwest that protects the wolves. Wolves are natural predators, but they maintain a balance in the wild. And they're being hunted and they're being killed down. And so they wanna be able to preserve that because again, it brings a really beautiful balance to our wild. Now I'm gonna go in with my blush. Now, if you guys could just see like, do you see that luminosity there? It's not oily or emollient, nothing like that. It just, th these products give the most beautiful, radiant, natural finish. And I'm just, I'm obsessed, guys. Of course, the animals or the causes that everyone's talking about as of late for the winter holiday releases are the zebra and the crane. And they talk about these organizations quite a bit and what they are trying to support and the causes. They share a little bit about the animals and they release these two luminescent eye shades that are just absolutely gorgeous. We have the zebra. Look how beautiful that is. And we have the crane. So with these two eye shades, oh my God, we can just create like the most beautiful eye look. So I'll do that. For this eye look, I'm actually going to use another Shantakai brush that is a favorite, which is the Shantakai Shade and Sweep. And you're able to just, like it says, just grab the shade and sweep it on for a really beautiful look. Gonna take my Shantakai Pure Rose Water and just spray that brush a little bit. Here's the zebra, really beautiful, beautiful color. And it's been wet a little bit with the pure rose water and we're just going to sweep it. I will say I love the color because of my medium skin tone. I find that I get maximum payoff when I do wet my brush. What I like to do because I don't want to create hard pan on the shadows is I will pick up the shade and then I will go in with my rose water and spritz the brush so that I can get this payoff. But it is just gorgeous. Now I'll take the shade and sweep on the crane, which is a much deeper color, and I will just deepen up the outer V. So in all, this is what I would say. Shantakai is just a very classy and beautifully thought out company. They attract top talent, they have wonderful people that work for them, but they're a family gig. And I love and appreciate that. And just the fact that they have a philanthropic focus really means a lot to me because, um, you know, regardless, first of all, when it comes to transparency, they are definitely very, very transparent. Because of some laws and the way that some of these um, donations are made to charities, they can't always just be blasted all over, but one of the things that 
Um, I have personally asked Sean to Kai representatives is like, well, how do we know how much is being donated? Or like, I have some questions about this organization or that organization. And they're always so honest and they just say, Hey, listen, because of certain agreements or laws and the way that we can market those, you know, if you don't find anything on their website, like ask, and you're always welcome to email them at customer service and ask about the philanthropic causes that they're donating to and get your questions answered. I mean, in general, my philosophy is always this, like we're going to spend money on luxury beauty. Why not spend it where there's beauty with a purpose? Why not spend it where we could do some good around the world? Like that's what I always think. Like, you know, I've done a few reviews of like berry tone colors for the holidays. And like, look at these eyes, you guys. Look at those eyes. Like that is some serious pigment. I think it looks absolutely gorgeous. And um, there's a lot of similar color stories that are being released this holiday season. But if we can help the great crowned crane um, in Rwanda, or and if we can help foundations that help different species of zebras, like this one in Kenya, which is the Gravy's Zebra Trust, like why wouldn't we do that? We already, if we love the color story, why wouldn't we support these causes is what I say. Now look at this amazing, amazing eye look. Oh. Okay, this is what I'm gonna say. I compared these shades to some recent holiday collections that were brought out. Guys, this color is just probably my favorite. It's in my favorite formula, which is the luminescent eye shade formula. And it is just absolutely stunning, stunning. I'm so excited about these shades. I'm going to open up my Walk for Giants um, Trio palette here with my refer number two, just a pencil brush, so that I can pop that into the inner corner. I'm gonna grab my refer again, go into the zebra, which is the lighter of the shades, and sweep that all under the lower lash line. Then I'm going to grab my crane. Oh my God, the crane is becoming like my most favorite shade, you guys. It is so gorgeous. And just kind of connect the lower lash line to the top. Wow, that's so pretty. Like, look at how smoked out we got those eyes. That is beautiful. Now we're gonna go in, this is a new product to me, but I've heard nothing but great things. And it is the Chantecaille Luster Glide Silk Infused Liner. Um, so this is what it looks like. I got mine in the shade Violet Damask. I don't know if you can pick up the violet there at the end, but I'll show you a swatch. I'll put it in between the blush and the highlight. And it's like a blue purple type of shade. It's really pretty. It glides on a very silky. I brought you in a little closer so you guys could see what I'm doing and I will go ahead and just kind of line very thin. That's really pretty. Now I'm taking my e.l.f. liner brush and just making sure that I can Spread it and smooth it how I'd like. So it's purple, but it has like a blue base. Oh my gosh, that's really, really beautiful. That's gorgeous, guys. Look at that. Okay, guys, there are the eyes. Look at that. Super, super smoky. Super pretty. I love the look that we're creating. Oh my God, I'm so excited. Now, why don't we set the face with one of their iconic powders? I'm gonna take my Sonia G uh, Smooth Buffer Brush and my Hummingbird Blur Powder. Thank you, thank you to Shantakai. They were able to find me this after it was sold out and I was just so excited that I was able to get it. Um, but what I like to do is take my Sonia G Buffer Brush and I just set my face with it. It's a little luminous, so I say that because I am combination skin, but during the winter, I'm a little bit more dry. So I would say that like, I have enjoyed this powder a little bit more now that it's cooler and I'm not as oily because it can be a little glowy is what I will say. But now that it's not as hot and humid here in Texas, I am really, really enjoying this powder. It is absolutely beautiful and it does exactly what it says which is to buff and blur the skin yeah gorgeous i just think the face looks gorgeous guys i think it looks really really good now i'm going to curl my lashes and tell you about probably my most favorite favorite product okay very very happy with the face overall now i have to tell you about my favorite favorite product the shantakai makes that would be 
the Chantecai Longest Lash Mascara. Um, I heard about this like on a few different videos and how it was like a cult favorite and you know how everybody loved it. That was like their claim to fame, you know, and whatnot. And this thing retails for $72. <laughs> but at the time, uh, I had just taken off my lash extensions and they, my lashes were so brittle. They were so short. Um, they even turned down, which my natural lash usually curls up. So they were just very damaged and they just needed to get healthy. And that's why I decided to take the plunge with this mascara. Um, can I tell you that I have to give you my exact reaction to it because I don't think that I've ever, I've never talked about it like in detail. When I open the mascara, it's one of those mascaras that's kind of too wet when you start. And um, I was like, eh, you know, my, my lashes still looked thin and there was not much going on, but I stuck with it. And so even if I wore lashes for videos or, you know, with mascara, what I would do is I would go in with my first coat of this mascara and then I would go on to another mascara to give it volume and um or i would go on top with some lashes and i just was using this as a conditioner or a primer or a base to whatever else i decided to use well within i have to tell you like within 10 days maybe i saw such a dramatic difference in my lashes it's like they were coming in and they looked super super bushy or i can't even explain it i can't even give it another type of word but super super bushy there was a lot of new lashes growing in they felt strong they felt conditioned they look silky almost when i would close my eyes and wash my face and they still do almost like you know when you have the foam ink lashes or whatnot and you close your eyes and they look silky that's what my lashes look like now and um they've just continued to grow they've continued to look really good once the mascara dries down a little bit you can wear it on its own absolutely i like a more like boom like in your face lash and i don't have the longest lashes so i always do go into it i go i do coat it over this with like a voluminous lash mascara and um but man this is now absolutely my holy grail i have to have to let you know how good this mascara is don't be afraid when you get it and it's too wet of a formula and it doesn't give you the desired look that you're looking for. This is going to give you length and it's going to more than anything fortify and condition your lashes in a way that you've never experienced before. And you can always use it as a pre-treatment. It lasts a long time. And what I do is after I'm done, like if I'm not wearing lashes that day, what I'll do is I'll do my longest lash mascara first and then I'll go in with a volumizing mascara. Right now I'm just using my Pat McGrath Dark Star Mascara, but it could be like something from the drugstore, whatever your favorite mascara is, but go into it first with this and you are going to be blown away. My email is down below. You can thank me after you use it and you experience what I have. It is the most amazing product ever. So it's a cool favorite for a reason. You know, I've experienced it now. I will never go back. That's all I got to say. So let's just talk about like in conclusion. Um, in conclusion, like they're a beautiful company. They're a company that the family entirely is working on. Um, they're a company that really values philanthropy and using their success and resources to benefit our planet, our wildlife, and just others. I also love the diversity that I see in the talent that they um, hire. So if you look at their teams, there's men, there's women, you see all colors, you see all um, backgrounds, and I just really love that. I think that that is a commitment to diversity and inclusion. I do think that, um, you know, as they get better and they receive the feedback that we're giving them, you know, their shades will get better as well. Shade ranges for foundations. There's a new foundation coming in January that we're really, really excited about. And so, you know, I think that this is valuable, like having these videos to show you what the company's about and then, you know, making sure that they know like, hey, we appreciate what you're doing um foundationally like at your company level with the people you're hiring and the experience you're bringing on and all that but um make sure that that translates to the shade ranges that we see make sure that many can enjoy and benefit from your products because i think that you know again that's the ultimate goal 
And um, yeah, I mean, I just absolutely love the brand. So let me finish my mascara. Hey guys, sorry, I lost the last few minutes of my footage, but I just wanted to wrap up the video by saying this was the final look. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please don't forget to give it a like. Make sure and subscribe and definitely go follow me on Instagram and Twitter. I will see you guys next time. Bye.